You're listening to Sports Connections with David Smale. What was your reaction to making the Olympic team? Was this a long time goal or did this just come up recently? So it started in 2016. I was a high school senior and karate hadn't been in the Olympics yet. So this is the first time it's ever in the Olympics and probably the last since it was denied its entrance to the 2024 Olympics. So uh, when I was a senior in high school in 2016, it was announced that it would be going to the Olympics. And I was like, hey, I really want to make it to the Olympics. I really want to qualify. I'm going to do everything possible. I was 18 at the time. So very ignorant. I didn't know how difficult the whole process would be. I didn't know how much I would have to sacrifice in order to be here where I am today. But, you know, through through the years, that the, the following three years that came after that, or four or five years that came after that, um, I started to develop as an athlete, as a human I, in so many ways. And before I knew it, I'm a completely different person than I was, obviously, from high school. Uh, but I didn't think it would be that huge of a difference. And um, so once I qualified for the Olympics in that stage, I, I knew the second that I won that second round on in, um, in Paris that I would go to the Olympics. And it was just like um, like 20 pounds off my body just went <laughs> flying, gone. It's like, whoa. Like I'm 23 and I already have a lot of gray hairs and people notice, hey, <laughs> why do you have gray hairs? And I'm like, hey, guys, listen, since I was 18 in high school, I've been stressing over trying to go to the Olympics. So if I have gray hairs, it's because I've been stressed. You know, I didn't have a social life. I've always just been focused on training, training, uh, how to make some money and come up with the funds in order to travel, to go to all these events. So as a kid, I wasn't much of a kid. As a teenager, as a young adult, I wasn't much of a young adult. I was always focused to be a professional athlete. And eventually I became a professional athlete and I was able to keep traveling. Uh, funded, thank, thankfully, you know, thank God to the Federation and everyone that was able to support me. And so when I when I qualified for the, the team, it was a dream come true. I thought about all the sacrifices my family made and my, my sensei, Robert Young, and everyone that contributed uh, to my uh, career. It's just like, hey, you know, we did it and I'm here. That's really cool. Here, excuse me, here all the time about, about people achieving a dream. And it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like yours was a lifelong dream, but it certainly uh, culminated with uh, with something that was really special for you. I want to talk yes, about sir. various types of martial arts. To mm-hmm. the casual observer, they all look the same. Taekwondo, yes. judo, karate. Talk about the differences between karate, your, your sport, and judo and taekwondo. So let, let's, let's talk about something very similar very quickly. So we have judo, uh, taekwondo. Karate do. So they all end in do. And do means the way, a way, a way of. So karate meaning empty hand, the way of empty hand. Taekwondo, I don't know what taekwondo means, but I'm assuming <laughs> it would mean something about the kicks because taekwondo is generally focused on kicking. Judo is generally focused on throws, slams, you know, controlling your opponent, throwing them, taking them down. Taekwondo is mostly focused on kicks, and karate is focused on mostly empty hand techniques which is a combination also of, of kicking, uh, throwing. So karate is more mixed up with everything in, in general. So martial arts would be like the big picture, not only taekwondo, not only judo, not only karate, but jujitsu and all these other things that exist. Aikido, uh, a lot of things, you know, a lot of martial arts, mm-hmm. even MMA, all these things are martial arts, right? And now after you find out what each martial art is, like you have karate, judo, taekwondo, like you were saying, now each one will be separated. Like karate is separated into styles, styles. Um, Goju Ryu is a style of karate. Shito Ryu is a style of karate. Wado Ryu is a style of karate. And then between those styles, there are organizations for each style. And between those organizations, it branches up into more things, right? So it's a big bubble. But now for competition, uh, karate has two divisions. Kumite and kata. Kumite is sparring and kata is forms. I qualified to the Olympics for forms. Um, there are only 10 competitors in the world that qualify for forms, uh, for kata forms, and 10 male and 10 female. So it was very difficult because there's not only one athlete in the per country in the world, there was just 10 athletes in the world that get to qualify for the Olympics in kata. It was very limited, very restricted, and the, the process was hard, yeah. Thanks for listening to Sports Connections with David Smale. Make sure to subscribe, follow, and rate the show from your favorite podcast platform. You can learn more about David Smale and his work by visiting davidsmalebooks.com. Don't forget to join us weekly for new episodes. Until next time.